get up to a good conversation of cause and effect. That's where I like to stay. Now, I know psoriasis from the textbooks, it dictates that there is no known cause, but that's one working theory. That's one applicative theory. That's a large school research, but it is one paradigm of research. And I focus my research more on the mechanisms of the body, how the body works in totality, how all the different systems affect each other from the digestive to the endocrine, to the nervous, to the cardiovascular, to the, to, to the lymphatic system, the forgotten system, our sewer system, how they all interact and how the body, when it becomes healthy, is able to detoxify and eliminate some of these perpetual causes and triggers and things that cause us to flare and cause us to stay stuck on this ongoing carousel of managing psoriasis symptoms. I look at psoriasis itself as symptoms. I don't look at it as a disease. I think if we look at it as a disease, especially under an autoimmune disease, I say that that's chasing a ghost. Look at psoriasis as the symptoms. Look at psoriasis as the signs the body is sending you. Look at those signs, you know? So the, the psoriasis on the skin, I look at as just a, a strong signal that depending on how fast it comes and how much it spreads and how much of the body it covers, depend is depending on what you're dealing with or what I'm dealing with. And that makes us unique. Uh, the different brew of toxins and pathogens and dysbiosis going on in the gut and a lot of imbalance and environmental toxin, environmental poison that we're consistently exposed to in certain ways that brew together and then the liver getting overwhelmed with dealing with it. And then it starts to circulate around the body. If our kidneys aren't really strong, then those symptoms will flow. Those, those toxins will flow around. Focused on cause and effect. I know that my body is getting stronger and healthier throughout. I mean, I could go through a long list of benefits, a long list of, of, of improvements. Uh, now, of course, psoriasis in my skin improving is one aspect, but I had deep pains in my hip. I had deep pains in my shoulder. I had that I just thought were old injuries. I had swollen ankles uh, that, you know, I was losing my mobility in my joints. I was aging. Ever since working on natural healing, I've been reversing age, so to speak, in the sense that, you know, through yoga and Qigong and meditation, and then of course, focusing on my diet, what I eat, what it's so important, what I put in my body, it all makes a huge difference. I've proven that to myself because for 10 years of not doing anything about psoriasis, I know how psoriasis behaved when it was chronic and it was slowly taking over my existence and the cage was shrinking. As opposed to these last seven years, how psoriasis behaves when I'm in control of what I put in my body and how I treat myself, my inner dialogue. I don't punish myself nearly as much as I used to with my thoughts. I'm opening up a lot of space in my life to heal further and to be in more control of these symptoms as far as by releasing the causes of them, mental, emotional, and physical. And that's why disease for, for us can sometimes come on very slowly. Psoriasis for me in 2003, when it started, was very, very mild on my scalp. It, it, it progressed very slowly. And then after I got, I would get ill, typically, uh, an infection or illness or systemic cold or bad flu, it would get worse. It was always tied to that. So when I was in natural healing, I was also putting my timeline together. I was looking back at all those days in my ignorance and I started to really jot down and chart the traumas and injuries and surgeries that I had been going through. And then also the illnesses, infections, and, and those aspects as well, and how they all interplayed. And when I laid that chronological time frame down, I realized much more about cause and effect. The root canal that I had at 17, the viral strep throat infection I had just after the root canal or are these connected? Maybe, probably. When I had the root canal removed, the, the whole tooth pulled out 15 years later, was it? Yeah, just about 12 years later, sure enough, massive cyst inside the dead tooth could easily have been causing chronic problems. After I had that cyst released and that tooth out, well, guess what? The psoriasis on the face got as worse as it had ever gotten. This is after I had cleared it naturally. Now I was fighting a deeper fight. I was getting to a new phase of this war against 
bad microbes that have been taking advantage of weaknesses. In my case, uh, deep traumas, deep, deep knee surgery, ACL reconstruction, and a botched root canal that later hence got infected viral strep infection. Right after that, acne all over the face. The skin symptoms where I started to realize on my timeline were representative of traumas past and infections that had not gone or left the body completely. That's the synopsis I came to. So that's my focus. That's my cause and effect. I'm not focused on the one P psoriasis. I'm focused on the two P's, pathogens and poisons. That's what I'm focused on. The psoriasis behaves erratically. But every time I get closer to clearing out infection in my left knee, and I'll tell you right now, those symptoms have nothing to do with psoriasis, but I watch them come and I watch them pass and I watch them come again and I watch them pass as my body yield deals with this in cycles. The psoriasis behaves erratically around what the body is doing in those acute areas, what I call my epicenters, my ground zeros. For me, here is ground zero and the left knee. So both are on the left side of the body. Typically the psoriasis symptoms for me are more severe on the left side and more aggressive and more stubborn on the left side. And then of course I have the, the psoriasis uh, symptoms all over the abdomen and lower colon, and that's the battle of the gut bacteria. Dysbiosis that I'm still balancing out. I'm still reviving my resident gut bacteria. Now that I'm focused on that, the last about three years, Focusing, uh, reading mainly uh, Dr. Justin and Erica Sonnenberg's work at a Stanford lab. They're two microbiologists that I feel are on a cutting edge of microbial medicine and the gut back, the gut microbiota as a mechanism for health and vitality. So I've been focused on nurturing my gut bacteria. I wasn't doing that in the first two years when I cleared the first time. So there was still a lot of imbalance. And that's where I basically will focus my, my diet around now is eating high fiber, diverse, plant fiber. I'm trying to feed a diverse ecology of, of positive or beneficial bacteria in my gut. The pathogens we may be dealing with are also unique to us. There are different strains, different aggressive natures or more docile. But I think that everybody that's dealing with psoriasis, eczema, acne, dermatitis, Crohn's disease, the, 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 the myriad of these so-called autoimmune diseases are dealing with, I think that mo all of us are dealing with some sort of pathogenic activity endotoxin, neurotoxin, toxins that the liver has a very tough time with, especially if there are heavy metals or some sort of environmental antagonist that are causing the problem to be worse and that are really hard to eliminate without focused help from us, from each one of us, the warriors.